Okay, everyone, welcome back to our next lecture over the circulatory system and the respiratory system. I'm going to try to make this a super brief lecture, um, rely a lot on the supplementary uh, videos on YouTube if you want to get the really nitty gritty details of this. We'll try to make this super brief. <clears throat> so, um, this lecture is over the circulatory and respiratory system. Both of these systems work together. Um, the circulatory system works to move the oxygen. Um, and nutrients around your body. And the respiratory system brings the oxygen um, in from the outside and the CO2 out uh, from the inside out. Um, so the respiratory system brings the oxygen in, circulatory system um, sends the oxygen around the body. Um, and then the CO2 that's released from the body is brought back to the respiratory system in the lungs and then pumped back out into the environment. Um, so these two systems work together um, for those two things. Um, oxygen is important to make ATP. You can recall this from Biology 1, the metabolism concept, um, that lecture uh, about the electron transfer chain where oxygen is the terminal electron scepter, things like that. Um, and without oxygen, uh, we would not be able to make ATP. Uh, so breathing is very, very important uh, without a constant and steady supply of fresh oxygen. Um, no ATP can be generated, or very little, I should say, um, and then we would probably have a very difficult time living. Um, so, um, oxygen is brought in, CO2 is the byproduct of making ATP, so that CO2 has got to go somewhere. Um, so we breathe that CO2 out, the blood brings it out of the muscles, where it's, um, the uh, uh, mitochondria, where that's uh, um, living in the muscle cells, it's converted all that ATP, or that um, oxygen into CO2. Um, brings it out of the muscle cells and stuff via the blood, and then uh, the blood carries all that CO2 back to the lungs, and then it's um, exhaled out. So, uh, we need a pump to move everything around, if you know anything about uh, plumbing or anything like that, or, um, to move uh, liquids long distances or uphill. Um, you have to have a pump eventually at some point in time. Um, so this is the pump that we have in our body to move those fluids around um, our heart. So the uh, pipes um, are blood vessels um, that carry um, the oxygen and the nutrients and things around um, in the blood that are dissolved in the blood um, around to the body and muscle cells and things like that to um, feed our body um, and keep us alive. Um, so blood is very, very super, uh, very, very highly connected, I should say, to the rest of the uh, body um, and those two organ systems in particular. Um, particularly with blood cells inside, so you're probably familiar with the three different types of blood cells. You have red cells, white cells, and platelets. Platelets are clotting. Red blood cells carry oxygen. Um, white blood cells are your immune cells. Um, hemoglobin is the molecule that's found in abundance inside of red blood cells. Um, and that hemoglobin has an iron molecule on it um, that accepts oxygen that carries it around our body. Um, and once it, the red blood cell gets from where it needs to go, the uh, oxygen is dumped off that hemoglobin molecule um, and then used um, to make ATP with. So um, blood carries around nutrients, it carries around hormones, um, all kinds of super important things. Um, it carries around waste products to get to the kidneys, all kinds of super important stuff um, that blood also does other than just carry nutrients around. Um, so blood has got a lot of different things made of it. Um, if you've ever had your blood taken, if you've ever seen it uh, sit in a little tube, or you may have seen that on CSI shows, um, it separates eventually if you don't add a, uh, um, if you don't keep it shaken, um, and you get that uh, plasma on top, which is mostly water. Um, it's got a little bit of proteins and some other salts and goodies and junk in there, some hormones and whatnot um, inside of your body. And then the rest of the stuff that sinks is going to be the heavy stuff, the red blood cells, a little bit of platelets, um, and then very, very, very small part of your immune cells. Um, that are found in your uh, blood. Now that number goes higher if you get um, an infection, that number will go significantly higher. Um, so you need a lot of red blood cells to keep the oxygen going, um, a little bit to keep your immune cell going, and most are your immune cells, a little bit to keep their immune system going. Um, and then you can just get uh, a whole bunch more when you're ready for them. When you get an infection, playlist to keep you safe if you get cut. Um, and then you have to have uh, the liquid portion of the blood for the cells to move around it, and this is what the plasma is serving as. So, if the, uh, so the, essentially the water slide concept. Um, without the water, you would essentially just be sitting at the top of the water slide. You'd never be able to go down the water slide. Um, you're the red blood cells in that case. You'd never be able to move anywhere. 
Mm -hmm. So without the water on the water slide, the plasma, the red blood cells would not be able to move around the water slide, the body, mm -hmm. um, the arteries and things like that, and carry nutrients and uh, oxygen around where they need to go. So I've kind of already gone over this one. Um, if you want to dig in a little deeper into the hemoglobin concept, you can there. Um, there's different types of red blood cells. There's five different types. Leukocytes, uh, they get their name, leuco meaning white, site meaning cells. Um, they get their names, the different types of leukocytes based on how they take stain, um, eosinophils, basophils, things like that. Um, lots of different types of them. They're very cool. If you want to dig around into those, check out the uh, supplemental video. There's a, um, a lecture on for that in there. Um, platelets, we've talked about that. Um, clotting factor, they essentially stick together, um, form a nice little net, um, and then the, the uh, uh, red blood cells and things, and um, other platelets get caught in the net, um, the immune cells get caught in the big giant blob, and they start building up each other on the essentially the snowball concept, um, and that's essentially going to form a scab which plugs up whatever hole you've got in your body at the time until the uh, skin can grow back. So here's what blood does, um, I've gone over most of those things, um, essentially lots and lots and lots of stuff. So um, how organisms move things around in their body really just differs on the type of organisms. It's pretty easy to understand. The lower down on the evolutionary chain you go, um, the more simplistic type of circulatory system you have. Um, so things like flatworms are little planarians here and are jellyfish. Um, very simple cnidarian down here. These guys don't really have circulatory systems. They don't really have a heart um, per se. <clears throat> Mostly what happens is um, their gills, they breathe in water, um, or they don't really have gills for that matter, they mostly just kind of suck in water from the outside or their cells that are floating around, uh, excuse me, their cells that are on the surface of their skin, um, or they breathe in their, their cells, the water that they breathe in through their mouth, they, they take in through their mouth, I should say, <clears throat> the cells that are inside of their stomach lining, um, or the cells that coat the inside of this guy's uh, gut here. Um, and the cells that are <clears throat> found on his surface, since these guys live in a, a wet, watery environment, um, their cells just conduct diffusion from the environment for oxygen. Um, CO2 is gone, um, diffuses back out through the body um, into the water. Um, so oxygen in, CO2 out, pretty much the same way that your lung works. These guys are just a big, giant, exposed lung, really weird concept. But they're in the uh, moist environments, so they can do that. You have to essentially be wet to be able to conduct diffusion, which is why your lungs are always moist. Now, there are some organisms that have a, a very simple type of circulatory system. Um, they have a heart, but they don't really have uh, circulatory systems that have uh, nerve or arteries and veins and things in that sense. Now, they have really short vessels, um, and the vessels don't have, uh, they aren't closed, they just open into the body. Um, so things that have open circulatory systems, like this grasshopper here, um, their heart moves the blood and stuff around, um, and then it just kind of oozes out into their body and rushes around inside of the body, and then eventually it'll rush back into a um, the heart uh, somewhere. Eventually the water pressure or this organism will move around enough, and the blood will get swashed back into the heart, um, where it'll get reoxygenated and sent back around. So very strange concept on how these guys work. Um, then you have the closed system, which is what we are, lots of other organisms where you have heart that moves uh, oxygen-rich blood to the body, um, the oxygen and nutrients diffuse out, and then brings that uh, nutrient-rich uh, poor and oxygen-poor blood back to the heart to get a refresh and then pumps it back around all in one big tube. So it's an open system up here, with a, uh, down here with the, the, the uh, <clears throat> tubes just kind of run into the body and everything just kind of globs together, and a closed circulatory system down here. Um, with the pipes are uh, all connected, um, and the blood just stays in one giant loop, um, and it's all pumped around and refreshed over and over and over again by the heart. So there's lots of different types of the open circulatory system, um, lots of different types of closed circulatory systems, um, different numbers of hearts and things like that in each one, different numbers of heart chambers, but the main way, um, and the main two that we really focus on in vertebrates, um, are the open circulatory, or sorry, the closed circulatory system without chambers to the heart, uh, or sorry, with a, without lungs, um, and then organisms with lungs, which are kind of different. So organisms with gills, they don't need lungs. They just have uh, the gills that are open to the environment. The water can rush right past the lungs, or the gills, which essentially serve as the lungs, um, and get refreshed from the water. Um, get their oxygen from the water, the CO2 can diffuse back out from the water and then right back into the system um, and then pumped around through the 
body moved around and then the oxygen poor blood's going to come back from the body into the heart and pumped back to the gills for a refresh. So they have one step essentially they're in uh, from the body um, from the refresh from the, the outside to the body fresh the body out um, then take the bad stuff back out the oxygen poor blood uh, pump it back to the heart and then pump it back to the gills to a refresh. So a really easy one step process. Um, and then organisms like us or birds and things like that, um, amphibians, they have a heart and lungs, so they have an extra set here we have to go through. Um, we don't live in a water environment, moist environment, so we just can't diffuse into the uh, environment, which would be really cool. So air you can't diffuse into the environment with, essentially, pretty much, uh, um, quite as well. Um, so it takes a really long time to do that. Um, so we have to have lungs that are wet uh, for us. So this serves as our essentially our pond. These guys live in a pond. Um, and then essentially we have a pond inside of us, essentially how this one works. Um, so these are our gills, our internal gills, they just have gills on the outside. So that's essentially how this works. So, uh, so blood in, uh, from, or sorry, we don't have, uh, sorry, oxygen in from the outside. And that oxygen is pumped into the lungs, given a, a refresh to the oxygen poor blood, pumped in from the heart, the, the uh, oxygen rich blood is going to be pushed around the body. I'm going to deposit all of the oxygen and nutrients and everything around the body. And then that oxygen poor blood is going to come back into the heart, get pumped uh, back out of the heart to the lungs to get a refresh, which is essentially where the gills would come into here. Um, and then all the carbon dioxide is going to be diffused out through the lungs, and then oxygen is going to be diffused back into the blood from the outside. Um, and then everything starts over and over and over again. So different chambers of the heart, so different concepts, different ways that these work. Uh, different environments, but they're essentially the same process, just we have a pond inside of us, they have a pond outside of them. So really cool here. Um, so you can see here all the different types of arteries, all the different types of veins and things that move around inside our body, and we'll talk about those in just a second. So arteries away carry blood away from the heart. It's an easy way to remember that. Arteries away. So arteries, you can see here on this side, are going to carry blood away from the heart. So blood that's away from the heart, um, you can see here, is going to be our nice red color, going to be pumped around the body. So let's see our, um, follow our arteries. Um, carries oxygenated blood away from the heart, we can find that here. All right, order, big giant red one right there. So in our major veins over here, veins are going to carry blood back from the heart. So blood that's been in the body is going to have the oxygen removed from it, and then it's going to be carried back to the heart and then pumped to the lungs for a refresh. So that's going to not have as much oxygen in it. So that's going to be blue. Um, so you can follow those around here. So the blue ones over here, jugular vein, cava, um, and things like that. So you can follow those around, dig in deep if you want to on the supplemental info. And you can go here, um, inside of our lungs if you want to, on our supplemental video and watch how oxygen is going to diffuse through the lungs. Essentially what happens is you breathe it in, um, it comes in through your lungs, the oxygen-rich blood is going to be uh, pumped in, sorry, the uh, oxygen-poor blood is going to be pumped in through the heart, uh, from the heart to the lungs, and essentially it's going to have all the CO2 diffused out, um, and then all the oxygen-rich blood is going to be pumped in on the other side, and then all the oxygen is going to diffuse very quickly um, from the oxygen, uh, high, high environment to the oxygen, poor environment is going to diffuse very quickly into that blood and oxygenated as well. So that's essentially how this concept works. Uh, so there's lots of different types of tissue that make up the circulatory system. Um, we've essentially talked about these before, epithelial connective nervous muscle, different types of tissues where they're found and what they do. Uh, so check out that lecture or the uh, supplemental activities in, if you want a refresher on that one. So the heart essentially is a giant pump. Um, a big muscle, the atria, is going to receive blood from the veins. Um, the ventricles is going to pump blood to the arteries. So the ventricles are going to pump blood away from the heart. The atria is going to receive blood back from the veins. Um, that's a low in uh, oxygen. Um, so you can see here, uh, check out the supplemental video. Um, if you want to get deep into how the heart beats or how the um, blood is moved around the heart. Um, pretty easy to understand. It's really not that difficult. Uh, but I'm trying to keep this lecture brief, so if you really want to dig into that one, you can. Um, the uh, heart itself is a big muscle, um, so if you know anything about running or exercise, um, muscles need fuel as well. Um, so the heart is no different, it is a muscle, so it has to have oxygen and nutrients to power the cells of that muscle. Um, so the heart has um, its own blood supply as well. 
um, to cardiac veins and coronary arteries and things like that. Um, so they run on the side of the heart, you can see them here. Um, one of these gets blocked, it cuts off oxygen supply to the muscle, then that muscle either starts to die or has a spasm, which is what a heart attack is. Um, so essentially, these um, veins and arteries get clogged, um, and that's what happens to cause a heart attack. So you can dig in here uh, deep on our supplemental activities if you want to, um, about how blood's going to move around the body, um, how blood's going to pick up oxygen and carry it around. Um, you can also dig in deep here if you want to. Um, hear about how blood, or sorry, about how the heart functions, um, the SA node and the uh, AV node, um, about it's an electrical impulse that powers the heartbeat. Um, essentially what happens is one of these, the SA node here, is essentially going to start the cycle. Once the cycle is processed, it essentially causes all of the rest of the little electrical currents around the heartbeat to fire, um, causing the heart to beat correctly. Um, if one of these nodes beats out of sync or doesn't fire correctly, it causes your heart to beat improperly, um, and that causes an irregular heartbeat. Um, so if you need a pacemaker, your, your heart doesn't uh, trigger itself correctly, so you have to have a, an artificial triggering to start the process. Um, and some people have to have uh, an arrhythmia, which is uh, or shocked back into rhythm and things like that, which is essentially one of the other nodes uh, doesn't want to work correctly, so you have to reset the electrical current. So uh, dig in deep on that one if you want to on the supplemental activities um, um, to understand a little deeper on how this one works. Um, keep in mind that all this stuff is going to be on your exam. Um, I'm just trying to keep this a really brief lecture um, to try to hit the highlights of this stuff on how this one works. So um, you can dig in real deep if you want to um, on the supplemental activities. Or, um, you can read the PowerPoints, but this is just a really brief overview, um, a real quick one um, to hit the highlights of this, uh, this lecture. Um, so the valves inside of your heart um, that open and close to let the oxygen um, poor blood and the oxygen rich blood in and out in the proper directions. Um, make sure that the oxygen rich blood doesn't mix with the oxygen poor blood um, and vice versa to make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to is essentially the doors that keep um, um, the, the, uh, everything functioning properly. Um, they have to be open and closed in the correct pattern and the correct order, and that's what these uh, little valves here do, the nodes, the electrical current, that's what they do, they open the doors in the correct order um, at the correct time. Um, so those doors opening and closing is what produces the lub-dub, the chick 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 sound, if you've ever heard a, um, a heartbeat uh, sound. Um, it's what the, the lub-dub-dub is the uh, sound that's going to be these two valves opening and closing um, in the correct order. Um, so if they don't open and close in the correct time, in the correct order, that sound's going to be different. Um, and that's what people listen for, doctors listen for, um, to diagnose uh, problems with the heart. So when you exercise, you strengthen your heart muscle, it makes perfect sense. Um, the stronger your heart muscle, the uh, less likely things are going to make you exhausted by running. Um, you have strong, more stamina, uh, things like that. Uh, it pumps blood quicker around your body. The more oxygen you exchange, the more uh, likely you are to have problems or not have problems bleeding. Um, the more of your immune system can get to a certain places to fight an infection, the more platelets are put to one area. Um, so pretty good thing to do um, with exercise to strengthen your heart muscle. So arteries um, essentially are a giant connection of thick and uh, thick giant thick layer of smooth muscle. Sorry. Um, they have to be able to withstand a lot of pressure that's coming from your heart. Your heart has uh, a giant, essentially, um, plumbing system that holds a bunch of um, fluid that has to be pumped around. So if you know anything about hydraulics, it's all under pressure. Essentially, this is a giant hydraulic system um, with a pump in the middle, and all of it's under pressure. Um, so without having, uh, if you've ever uh, watched uh, plastic pipes explode, um, under pressure, you know what kind of thing I'm talking about here. If they have copper pipes, you're essentially good, but if you have plastic pipes, it's going to blow up um, if you put too much pressure through them. And this is what happens with our uh, our arteries and veins. They have to be able to withstand the amount of pressure um, that's going through our circulatory system. So you have large uh, layers of muscle um, that surround your arteries and veins to be able to uh, make sure that everything stays uh, strong inside um, and that they can withstand the pressure of all that blood rushing through them um, and pushing out on the outside. So you have, uh, uh, and this also helps uh, your arteries and veins constrict and uh, open up um, to allow uh, regulation of blood pressure and allow for your immune system to uh, travel through 
um, and, uh, inflammation responses and fever responses and things like that. So very interesting concepts with the muscles that surround your blood vessels and the arteries and things like that. So dig into that one if you want to. Pretty cool. Okay, so um, essentially at the end of every single uh, artery and vein, you have a capillary bed, which is where everything is going to be exchanged. Capillary beds are essentially really thin layers of blood vessels. Um, they're only about a cell thick, um, which allows for very easily diffusion um, into the environment across that little one layer of cells. Um, so the blood rushes through there, it quickly diffuses in um, oxygen uh, or out oxygen and in CO2 and out CO2. Um, depending on where they're at in the body and things like that. So super cool um, how that one works. Um, pretty easy um, to understand the one layer thick concept. So you're, um, there's not going to be quite as much pressure here, um, but, so, but there's a lot of pressure up near the heart. So you can uh, have uh, thin uh, walls near the end of the line, essentially on your plumbing, but uh, near the actual pump itself, you need really uh, thick, uh, heavy gauge pressure uh pipes and things, which is why the muscles and valves and things that their uh, muscles and arteries um, are so thick. So uh, pretty easy to understand the difference and why you need that um, and where they are. Okay. So um, veins collapse when they're empty. Um, so when you, uh, open, when you bend, you bend your muscles, um, things like that, essentially the muscles on the other side are going to pinch the um, uh, veins and things closed to keep the blood flow from going in and out. Um, and things like that. So pretty interesting how your muscles work together um, to move the valves and to allow blood flow. So dig into this one and the supplemental activities if you want to. It's pretty neat how that one works as well. So blood pressure um, is the amount of pressure that your blood is going to exhort on the vessel's walls. Um, so if you, once again, back to our analogy, if you put too much pressure underneath even copper pipes, they're going to break. Um, and if your vein breaks, you're going to have problems. You're going to have a, an, an embolism, um, an aneurysm, excuse me, um, a cardiac uh, aneurysm or uh, um, an aneurysm in your brain or something like that, which is essentially a, a plumbing blow. Uh, the valve breaks or uh, essentially in your, your uh, brain and, <laughs> and you have a giant blood leak in your brain and you can die from that very, very quickly and very, very easily. Um, it happens all the time from high, too high of a pressure. Um, inside of your blood vessels and things like that. So um, watching your blood pressure, making sure you eat things that are healthy, um, regulating your blood pressure, um, not smoking, and not um, to drinking too much alcohol and things like that um, can help regulate your blood pressure. Uh, so too high blood pressure um, causes your uh, heart to have to work too hard as well. So it can really cause a lot of problems. Okay. So you can dig into this one, how blood pressure is regulated, how your heart um, helps beat faster or um, harder and things like that, or less um, and slower and things like that, depending on um, and how uh, your blood pressure is inside of it and how it regulates that if you want to inside of our um, supplemental activities. Okay, so the whole point of breathing is essentially to get nutrients or gas in and out of your body. Um, it makes perfect sense. You've got to have oxygen to breathe, to live. If you're um, uh, an animal with an open circulatory system or a closed circulatory system, essentially a higher animal, um, you're going to require oxygen in some way, shape, or form to make ATP. Um, so you got to get the oxygen in. you got to get the CO2. That's the byproduct of metabolism out. So gas exchange is going to be essentially the job of the respiratory system. So the cardiac system moves around all the gases, nutrients, and things. Um, and the respiratory system is going to get the gases in and out of the body that the cardiac system is going to move around. Um, so there's lots of different ways to do this. A couple of organisms are going to essentially have uh, either holes that are open to the environment. Um, since so the, the this is very strange, um, where... Oxygen is just essentially going to be brought in through their skin. CO2 is going to be brought out. Their lungs are essentially quote unquote lungs. And they're going to be very close to the surface, right up there, right next to those, and suck up the oxygen very quickly. Very odd concept. These things are called book lungs. Very odd. Um, things like worms breathe through their skin. Um, amphibians have very primitive lungs, and they breathe a lot through their skin with this same concept where the blood vessels sit right underneath the skin. Um, and the oxygen just breathe, just comes in and diffuses through their skin, and the CO2 just diffuses out through those blood vessels underneath the skin. Um, we have lungs, very easy concept to understand. We breathe it in, and um, it diffuses through the lungs and the alveoli into the blood vessels that surround them. This oxygen goes out, 
um, goes out of the lungs, uh, CO2 goes into the lungs and then out of the body, um, or fish, uh, and they have gills, um, where the water rushes by, the water takes away the CO2 and then refreshes the oxygen as it goes past, so pretty easy on that one. Um, you have to have, um, lungs are pretty important, um, they're always wet, uh, either by the environment, this is why fish die, take them out of water, they can't breathe, um, they essentially suffocate. Um, we have moisture inside of our lungs. Um, our nose and pa nasal passages and things like that are always moist. These guys have book lungs. They're wet on the bottom. If you put an insect in a dry environment, they essentially will die. Um, even insects that live in the desert have to have some sort of moisture to keep their lungs functioning. Um, and earthworms and things like this. Um, if you've ever seen an earthworm come up to the surface um, when it rains outside on the concrete, um, and they dry up, they're not drowning in that way. What actually happens is their um, the, uh, rainwater contains very little oxygen, and dissolved oxygen. In fact, it contains almost none. Um, so these guys, what happens is they, they can, uh, earthworms can survive in pure water. Um, so if you drop an earthworm in a fish tank, you can survive it as long as you have an oxygenator in it. It has a good oxygen supply. So essentially what happens is the water gets too, or the ground gets too full of water, um, that water doesn't contain any oxygen in it at all. The rainwater has no oxygen, so this earthworm can't breathe because there's no oxygen for him to breathe in that water. So he has to come up to the surface um, because to get oxygen. He can't breathe rainwater because it has no oxygen in it. Um, so they just come up to the surface so they can breathe. Now, it's it's they do come up to the surface to breathe, but it's for a different reason than um, what you actually most people think um, is going on. So weird concept there. Okay. Um, so if you want to dig into how our lungs work to move oxygen around, you can on our supplemental activities. It's pretty easy on this one. Um, different types of tissues that all work together to move our uh, lungs, to make our lungs open and close, to move the um, um, oxygen around, to regulate the movement of the lungs, opening and closing, and things like that. Um, so um, check out how we breathe, check out how the oxygen moves around. Um, inside of our lungs, we have two bronchial trees. Essentially, you breathe, and the air comes down your pharynx here into these giant bronchial tubes. At the end of each one of these, this giant, just essentially a giant tree root. Um, at the end of each one of the bronchial tubes, there are a bunch of little things called alveoli. Uh, the alveoli essentially look like little tiny things of broccoli. Um, each one of the little things of broccoli, the little uh, green balls at the end of the little broccoli thing, is a, um, a little sac that contains a bunch of cells that diffuse oxygen in and out. Um, of blood vessels that surround them. Pretty easy on that one. So here's what we're going for. Um, so here's our little broccoli ball, the little green ball at the end of each that. Um, blood from the lungs um, comes in that's oxygen rich. Um, is it, uh, going to be, yeah, the oxygen is going to, sorry, the oxygen is going to be refreshed, the uh, blood that's poor, um, and then blood flow that's oxygen rich is going to go out. Blood that's oxygen poor is going to be coming in, it's going to be refreshed. You can see our little thing here. Um, so poor oxygen, poor blood is going to come in, the CO2 is going to diffuse out quickly, um, the O2 is going to be diffusing in, um, and then you can see how it goes on out. So you breathe in, and then the oxygen is going to quickly diffuse into your blood, you breathe out, and the CO2 is going to be diffused out quickly, um, and that's how oxygen exchange occurs inside of your lungs. So millions of these sit on each one of those little ends of each one of those bronchial trees, uh, and this is what helps you breathe. So. If you get bronchitis or a pneumonia, these little things get filled with water, um, and essentially they don't exchange oxygen and CO2 very well. Um, so that's what pneumonia is, these little sacs get filled with some sort of liquid, um, some sort of uh, moisture liquid and things like that. They don't hold, uh, they don't exchange oxygen and, moisture, or, uh, and CO2 quite as well. So um, breathing is a very interesting concept. Um, your lungs naturally want to stay deflated. Um, if you breathe in and you just let yourself naturally breathe out, um, your lungs will naturally just relax and deflate. You have to um, breathe oxygen in, you have to breathe air in, and they inflate. They naturally just want to deflate. So um, a very odd way how this would work. So we have something called positive pressure breathing. Your lungs create a vacuum when they push air out, negative pressure on the inside, um, and then when you breathe in, um, air is sucked in, um, very easily because uh, of that negative pressure. Um, so it's, it forms an empty space which just sucks air in, and then you can force the air out, which makes a negative pressure again, form a deposit by breathing in. It's a very odd concept. It works a lot like bellows. Um, so dig into that one of the supplemental activities if you want to.
Um, people that have damage to their lungs or their diaphragm, the organ that powers your lungs, um, can be put on a ventilator um, that essentially is a set of bellows for your lungs. It pushes in the oxygen. Um, your, it turns off the oxygen supply. Your lungs naturally just close because this person has an injury that prevents them from being able to keep their uh, lungs inflated, forces the air out of their nose or their, um, ox the, their airway. Um, then the ventilator kicks in and pushes more oxygen back in because they, they don't have the ability to raise their lungs up uh, to, to suck in air. So um, the, you have to inflate the lungs, um, and then the air is naturally just pushed out, and that's what the natural state of our lungs is. It's just deflated, um, like an empty balloon kind of thing. You have to push the air in the balloon. Um, so that's essentially what happens with the ventilator. It works as pushing the air in for us without us sucking it in. Um, so um, you can dig into our supplemental activity to see how the air is brought around inside the body. Pretty easy, brought in through the nose, um, brought in uh, down the pharynx into the bronchial tubes. The oxygen is going to be exchanged through the alveoli. Um, that bad air, um, the oxygen poor air is going to be brought back up um, and then back out um, through the nasal cavity and through the mouth if you choose to exhale that way. Um, so pretty easy. Um, how that one works. So dig into how breathing works on our supplemental activity if you want to get a little more in-depth than that one. Um, so pretty easy to understand here. CO2 comes in um, from the body. Um, the cells that are making ATP uh, use the oxygen and make it CO2. The CO2 enters the body, uh, the bloodstream, and then it enters the lungs. Um, CO2 is going to be diffused out. Um, you breathe that out as and the oxygen that you breathe in. Um, is then going to be diffused into the blood um, to then uh, uh, reinflate the blood, and then that blood is going to be pumped around the body, <clears throat> where that oxygen is going to then um, be dispersed um, onto the cells where it needs to go. Um, so these things happen in opposite directions. So out in the body, the CO2 is going to be, um, uh, the oxygen is going to be diffused out, no CO2 is going to be brought in. Um, and then the other way around, when you get up here, the CO2 is going to be brought out, um, and then the CO2 is going to be brought in. So, sorry, sorry, I said the other way around. So the um, oxygen is going to be diffused out inside the body cells, the muscle cells. The CO2 that they've created through ATP is going to be diffused in, um, and then the opposite thing is going to happen inside the lungs. CO2 that's been created is going to be diffused out, and the oxygen from the environment is going to be brought in. So opposite processes in different parts of the body. Um, so you can check out in our um, uh, supplemental activities how breathing is controlled by the brain. It's also controlled by the pH of the blood. A um, very odd concept of how this one works, and these two things are connected. And that's essentially all that there is for this PowerPoint. I know this one's super brief. I'm trying to keep these brief. Um, make sure you read this PowerPoint over. Um, if you want to get a little more in-depth, feel free to dig into the supplemental activities. Um, I hit the high points on this one. Um, just make sure you check out the supplemental activities. Um, make sure you check out the Read the Bible PowerPoint. Um, but feel free to email me if you want a little more in-depth explanation over anything at all. Um, so, but make sure you check out the supplemental activities on things if you uh, um, if you need um, the extra um, information. Um, other than that, have a great rest of your day. And feel free to uh, hit me up uh, on email um, if you have any questions at all.